All right. Well, there's certainly been a flurry of moves the last couple of weeks, and uh, we know the Ticats front office has been busy. So let's get more with the assistant general manager and director of player personnel, Spencer Zimmerman. Welcome back to the Ticats, Spencer. Uh, before we get into all the moves, the busyness of the last few weeks, uh, just take us through kind of uh, coming back to the Ticats, how it all came to be. Yeah. Hey, Lou, great to be back. Um, it was uh, definitely something that happened pretty quickly. Uh, you know, my relationship with, uh, with O, um, you know, we always were communicating and staying in touch. And, you know, when there was, uh, an opportunity and the right fit, it was, it was a no brainer to be back. And obviously working with, uh, with Drew, I'd worked with Drew actually coming into the league and, and I guess it would have been 2012 when I started as an intern here and, uh, yeah, we always stayed in touch and, uh, getting to work with Ed. Obviously, these first three weeks has been awesome. We've been, uh, you know, competing, I guess, against each other when he was in BC and Edmonton. And, um, you know, I've really got to know each other and ramp up our relationship over these last three and a half weeks. What has the collaboration been like? Because the Ticats have always, I mean, in the front office, especially as of late, uh, there's always kind of been that collaboration effort. But, I mean, the, the assistant GMs, the experience that's in this room where you're making these decisions, how does it all come together? How does it work? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think you kind of touched on the keyword, which is collaborative, um, first and foremost. And then I think there's there's layers to that. And the first layer is just, different experiences obviously Drew's been here for a long time and experienced different regimes and seasons and and Ed having been a general manager himself at at two different stops um, and I've had some experience obviously over um, you know down the road um, and we just kind of tried to bridge all those different experiences together and come up with the uh, the best plan obviously through O's vision and, and that was kind of first and foremost just sitting down with O and seeing how you know his vision for the team and uh, he does a really good job, uh, a clear job of communicating that. And we've tried to kind of execute on that over the last couple of weeks. All right. Well, you led me right into my next question there, because, you know, going into these things like free agency or the draft or the global draft, you have a plan and then there's the plan and then there's what actually happens. How right. close to the plan, you know, whether it was <laughs> positional groups or specific guys, how close to the plan has the last few weeks gone for you guys? Sure. I mean, free agency is fluid. It's fluid every year. Um, you have a lot of, uh, I guess, preliminary uh, vision of how it's going to go down and uh, and you adapt just like football as it goes along. I, all I can say is uh, we're really grateful to the players, uh, especially our core players that chose to be here. They were highly coveted and they were uh, extremely open in communicating that they wanted to be back here first and foremost. And they were patient in allowing us to, whether it was reconfiguring our salary cap, uh, you know, sending different proposals to try to get creative to make sure that we could keep our core intact. So we're very grateful that they chose to stay here. Yeah. And I've said that a couple of times throughout the week that, if you know, if you look at the guys who re-signed, if they had opened the market, it hit the open market and, a, you know, a team had picked up a Dylan Wynn, Simone, Cariel, you know, all those guys, Tunde, Teddy. I mean, you'd be talking about what a haul. The fact they decided to come back, uh, just such a huge vote of confidence to what uh, Coach O is building, what you guys are building here. I do want to ask you some specifics. Alden Darby, uh, someone who, you know, has – Great cup experience. We know that well here in Hamilton. Uh, what do you, what did you see from him? You have some experience from, like you said, down the road there uh, in that other city in Ontario on the QEW. What have you seen from him and, and how fortunate are you to, uh, to be able to bring in a guy like him? Very fortunate. Um, I'll talk about just off the field, his charisma. Um, it's <laughs> infectious. And we hope we know he's going to bring that obviously uh, when it comes training camp time and even hopefully earlier, you know, when it comes to some of the off-season workouts, because he does make kind of Ontario a, a partial home base for him. Um, but on the field, I mean, Darby, so uh, I got to know Darby probably a year and a half before he came up and really communicated with him a lot. Uh, if you know his story, just in terms of how he got to Arizona State, how productive he was there, and obviously his tours in the NFL, it, was, uh, it wasn't it was surprising when uh, we brought him up early into the season he didn't have a training camp you know next thing you know he's starting for us in Toronto and uh, making a lot of plays I mean he touches a lot of footballs he's very instinctive uh, he's a good tackler he's active um, and you saw that even this past season in the Grey Cup you know he was a very very active uh, urgent player for us 
uh, or I guess competing against us that we need to get over here in Hamilton. So we're excited to bring him into the mix and he's really, really excited to join us as well. Uh, Spencer, any, everybody can, can see the depth chart. Everybody can see the moves that you've made. It seems like you're bringing guys in knowing that there's going to be competition at certain positions, sp certain spots on the field. Is that, is that explained to them? Is that just kind of the way that football works or is it, you know, nothing's given on this team. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to have to compete. No, totally. It, it, it's a great, it's actually a great point. And it's something that's uh we really emphasize here is, uh, you know, we believe the player needs to understand the expectations and the opportunity that they're potentially signing up for. And it's up to them to make the best decision to want to be here. But uh, competition is going to be first and foremost. You know, nothing's promised, nothing's guaranteed. And it's up to them to want to join us, knowing that they're going to be in a highly, highly competitive room. Um, and hopefully they, they think that's the best fit for, uh, fit for their career. I do want to ask you about maybe one of the signings that flew under the radar because he wasn't quite a free agent, but Tony Brown, the wide receiver. I, I'm, I'm putting this question to you uh, because you know, former U.S. director of scouting, what do you see in Tony Brown? And, and is he a guy who you think can make an impact right away in 2022? It's always a, uh, a tall task for a first year player to come in, but, but the expectations are they, they need to, you know, to make this team. But, you know, with Tony, um, another productive player at Colorado, spent a little bit of time with Washington. Um, we like him for a couple of reasons. One is versatility. You know, I think he can play X, and it's, which is a, a you know, really hard position in the CFL to find players there. But obviously he can still move inside and play slot. He's got good hands. He's tough. Um, you know, he can stack vertically. You'll see him, you know, if you walk, pull up his college tape, there's going to be some jet sweet things where, you know, just his competitiveness rather than just his pure athleticism of making players miss in space or creating some extra yards. But I think he'll fit in the offense really well. He's smart, can move around, um, he can catch the football. And kind of those, uh, I guess, are the three elementary things we look for. And we know kind of the flurry of moves that have happened the last, you know, week, the week before. Uh, what do the next few weeks look like? Is it is it still these conversations? How active are these conversations? Because I, I I believe you guys have you know earned a chance to take your breath. I know you guys won't, but what do the next couple of weeks look like uh, for you and the rest of the front office? Yeah, I think this this comes from O is uh, we're going to explore every avenue of player acquisition. Right, there's so many different avenues to acquire players. Free agency is one of them. Free agency is still ongoing. But uh, we're going to continue to explore every avenue. And that's kind of what this, this fluid CFL offseason is for us, whether it's a, a free agent American, whether it's a trade, whether it's a, a free agent CFL player, um, whether it's a Canadian player that we want to work out. So we're going to try to explore all these avenues that kind of go ongoing and take us through the combine and then some. And that's kind of what we're doing right now uh, for these next couple of weeks as well. Well, it should be uh, fun to watch, and uh, I'm sure Ty Cats fans are, are going to take that one little tidbit you just dropped there, that little soundbite, and start theorizing uh, who you guys are going to be trading for and all that fun stuff. And uh, fans fans certainly know this team well, and uh, they take every little grade you give them. So, uh, Spencer, thanks so much for doing this. Like I said, it's great to see you back in the colors you belong in, and that's black and gold. Uh, thanks for doing this so much, and we'll see you around uh, Tim Hortons Field. Absolutely. Thanks, Louis.